Hello, everybody. Randy Patterson again here with Boomerosity. If you love the blues, you no doubt know who Larry McRae is. I got to listen to him live and in person about six or seven years ago. He came through my hometown of Maryville, Tennessee, and played for some friends of his at the Blue Society there. And I got to sit in on that and listen to him live. That's my first and only time that I've seen Larry, but I became a huge, huge fan. And so he has a new album coming out, or actually came out earlier this year, back in February, called Blues Without You, and I absolutely loved it. And the opportunity came up to talk to him by phone. He's on the road with, uh, on his own tour and touring some with the Almond Family Tour that has to do with the kids of the Almond Brothers. And boy, that, that had to be a lot of fun for him to be in on. So we talked a little bit about that, talk about the new album. And even got a little bit of a hint of what the next album could be about. So a lot of fun. We talk about some other artists like Joe Bonamassa and others. And uh, just just had a phenomenal, easy, very laid back chat. He called me from his hotel room in Albuquerque. And we just, we just sat and shot the breeze about the blues. And I think you're really going to love that. I apologize for the sound quality because what had happened, we had a technical glitch where for some reason the Zoom audio on his end was not working. We could not hear him. He could hear me, but I could not hear him. So what we did is I had him call my cell phone, and I we kept the video running, and I held the microphone or the, the phone up to my microphone. And so, you know, we will do the best we can in getting it edited and, and mixed so that it gets the clear, clearest sound possible. But I think you're going to enjoy the chat no matter what. So without any further ado, here's the first interview of what I hope are many more to come with blues great Larry McRae. Until next time, this is Randy Patterson with Boomerosity. Take care. Man, I, I was looking at your itinerary. You're coming down from Denver on your way to Phoenix. Where are you now tonight? We're in Albuquerque. All right. Yeah. Nice town. Nice. Phoenix is my old stomping grounds, man. Probably a friend or two will be there. And you're there with the Almond family That's right. the, how is that turning out for you i've been having a great time uh with the almond family uh devin almond is a great guy Dwayne betts is a great guy and the whole family revival i mean it's just been a big family traveling up and down the road having fun it's been a real good time well you know i i, I got the i had the privilege of interviewing melody trucks a couple weeks ago and yeah what, what a wonderful lady she is, and we had a great time talking. I, I met her. I had seen her perform at Spring of the Blues earlier last uh, this year, but I got a chance to talk with her at the Macon show with the uh, yeah. Family Revival. Fun. So yeah. I, I, I met her and Valor also. I met the met the both siblings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, you know. That guy will never uh, never have to worry about fame when it comes to that one little album cover, huh? So. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, man, that you know, I uh, before we get into the questions and everything, I, I was going to tell you, I had the privilege of catching you um, at a really small venue here. I, I'm up in the Smoky Mountains, and you played for the Smoky Mountain Blues Society at a little joint called Barley's. And in, uh, in downtown Maryville, over near the Maryville College. Oh, my yeah. goodness, yes. Yeah, a, a small room, probably no more than 40 or 50 people in there. But, man, you put on a heck of a show, man. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. That was, that was so probably much. about six or seven years ago, I'm thinking. I really love that area right there. You know, uh, Herman Long is a very dear friend of mine. I've known Herman for years and years. And I, I just really like coming there. It's beautiful. And it's peaceful, and yep. it's just a nice place to visit. Well, you're going to have to come back. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> so so just curious with this touring going on, and I know that with the, the Almond family, it's a, probably a little bit different than even, you know, if there had never been a pandemic, but has – did the has the pandemic changed how you tour? Or are you seeing differences in the crowd and how the venues treat you and all that kind of stuff? Well, yeah, I mean, and for me, you know, that's when all the uh, changes happening in terms of uh, my career. You know, I, I lost a lifetime manager. 
But, you know, when he passed away, then, you know, Joe B. and Josh uh, Smith contact me. I got a new record. I hadn't had a record for a long time. And just several things have uh, gotten better since then. It's just too bad that it seems as though sacrifices had to be made, you know, to to advance or improve. And that part of it I really don't like. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I was going to ask you, how what's it like having uh, Joe Bonamassa as a record label boss for you, huh? That, that's got to be that's got to be unique. <laughs> it, it it is, uh, you know. Uh, the thing of it is that I had met him and Josh both years and years before ever working with either one of them, and it kind of really put things in a different full circle type situation. Who would have ever thought it would have been the way it was? You know, I'm 20 years both of their senior, and for them to reach down and to pull me up, that's a quite a unique perspective. Do you find that with them being musicians like they are and in the same genre as you are, that it's brought a lot of benefits and made it easier to record for them and, and, and to deal with them? Ain't no doubt about it. If it had been different, it probably would have been a whole lot more difficult. But by the fact that both of them played, I think it gave us it gave us an even more uh, broader and more intricate communication. You know, it was more communication directly to the point. Or if it was something that uh, you know that was a communication issue, either one could come out and give you an example of how to play or what they were looking for, and that makes a big difference opposed to somebody just telling you what they perceive or something like that. Yeah, be able to give you an example. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. I mean, you get a bonehead like me that doesn't play trying to communicate with artists like you, that would just have to be a very frustrating for you. So to have, have that level of excellence where you all are on that same level and, and being able, I mean, I would love to have been a fly on the wall during that whole process. That would have just been amazing to see you guys work together and all that. And the most amazing thing for me was how fast it all went together. It was cut in seven days from start to finish. And, you know, that that's quite a lot to get in with them days, you know, to record 11 tracks and then go back and get them all sang and all the pieces. It was a lot of work, but it was a, a labor of love. And going in, I didn't have no idea how it would finish, but we stayed at it and we got it done. We even had a a day off at the end. So that was good. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he's got a reputation. Joe's got a reputation of just, I mean, he doesn't waste time. He gets in there. He knows the value of studio time and he gets in there and he, he knows what he wants and, and gets it done on his own stuff. So I imagine he kind of brings that same discipline to the studio with those that he's working with. Oh yeah. And he would always start, a couple of hours, you know, before everybody else got there, you know, he'd already been there a couple of hours working. Wow. Gosh, that, that, <laughs> that just has to be, heighten your level of respect for him. I would imagine. Oh, for sure. For sure. And just the fact that uh, they were willing to do what they did means a lot to me because um, I know what it feels like to be overlooked quite so well so i mean it, it was uh you know it was a great thing for me for them to get involved yeah yeah well I, i'm glad to see it happen and wow just uh, this album larry is phenomenal i love it i've listened to it a bunch of times and uh i'm just uh, you know aside from working with jb and 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 those guys what uh what else made this album different for you to put together Made it different? Yeah, from all your other albums. Well, for one thing is that um, uh, it was without my normal band. It was without my brother. And it was made with uh, my girlfriend. She was uh, uh, it helped me do a lot of the writing. You know, most of the musical ideas were mine. But, you know, several uh, lines and hook, you know, Peggy and I did together. And then I had a couple of other friends that helped out with writing that, you know, I had co-writes with. So I had a lot of help in the writing department, but it was mostly lyrics. I'm not the greatest lyricist sometimes. So whenever I would get stuck with lyrics, I had some good people to call to help me get off of my stuck spot and move on, you know, keep going. Right, right. 
And that was the biggest, that was the biggest difference and the biggest uh, thing to overcome, you know, in comparison to prior projects. Right. Working with the writers and, you know, uh, just just having a real good positive crew around and having help opposed to uh, having do, to do everything on your own. Yeah, yeah. It, mm-hmm. That just freed you up to be able to focus on the things you really wanted to do, like play, right? right? right. <laughs> so yeah, the album's sure. the album's been out for you know almost a year now. So what's the what's been the feedback that you've gotten from it? Well, from the industry, most of the reviews have been positive, and uh, from a working standpoint, you know, it's got me back out there working. I'm working some rooms that I've never worked before. And some, you know, just it, it's it's been a better quality of life, you know, since since that this record has come out, because um, the 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 gig profile has been better. I played some festivals and stuff this year. I'd never been invited to just several things like that, you know, different rooms and stuff that I'm playing that lets me know that the uh, record is having an, an impact, is having an effect. Which song? Um... And as I say to artists, I learned early on, you don't say, well, what's your favorite song? Because it's like picking your favorite child. And we're not, as parents, (laughs) supposed to do that. So what I do ask is, which song from the album would you point to as a calling card for the rest of the album? Saying, hey, if you like this song, you're really going to love the rest of the album. Right. Well, I think that um, that the title song is probably the most emphatic song on the record Mm -hmm. but you know i'm a a light-hearted person at times too and i really like groove and r&b soul Mm -hmm. so with that being said i think that um my my some of my i have about three or four favorites i have um breaking news Mm -hmm. arkansas mr easy and good die young yeah, I think that them my four four picks from as far as what I like listening to, and more of you know my standard groove, you know. Right. But but for on the more serious tip, I think that uh, no more crying, down to the bottom, and and blues for Paul, you know, blues blues yeah. without you, yeah. would you know, be on the other side, and even even the other songs like the bluesier stuff, what some people would call fillers, I think were good, you know, just good old barrel housing type blues and that and that's what I want to be associated with. I want to play that style of music, but I want to play it uh to a higher level and I want to play it modern enough to where the people of today's time can still enjoy that kind of groove where it's not something that's just hung up on the shelf. Oh, well you remember these days. Well we still got those days. That's we right. just gotta we just gotta freshen things up a little bit and make it something that's uh palatable to the listener still. Right. Well, it seems like, uh, you know, as a fan, I mean, I've always loved the blues. Even when I was a little kid and didn't know what blues was, I knew I liked, you know, some of Elvis's covers of, you know, his, his, his presentation of certain blues songs that he did. But, but bottom line is it seems like blues over the last, you know, 10, 15 years is really, enjoyed a resurgence in popularity and 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 people wanting to pay more to see guys like you and to to buy your records more than they used to before is does that sound like an accurate statement on your side well yeah i mean you know it seems that the uh blues, well you know the blues have a slight resurgence every so many years anyway and this time it seems like the focus has been on uh marcus king but, you know, every time that you have an artist that comes through like that, things get slightly better for the other ones that are, you know, in the same trench or, you know, doing something similar to that. It's just a matter of uh, having everything lined up and waiting on the opportunity to come to capitalize on it. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Well, it, like you said, I, and I like what you said about that, is that it does help bring up the people that have been sticking to it and, you know, thick and thin. I mean, uh, to see Bobby Rush enjoy, you know, a resurgence of popularity and all that, you know, does my heart good. Pardon me? 
I said, damn near age nine. Uh, Bobby got to yeah. be eight years old or something. Yeah. Yeah, and then what got his Grammy a couple years ago, and boy, yeah. you know, it's about time. I'm glad they did it before he, you know, while he was still around, and that that's the way it should be, you know. Right. But um, right. But right. Uh, but yeah, to to see the artists that have stuck with it and not just new people get it, get the uh, accolades, I think is the way it should be in this genre or any genre for that matter. So. Do you have, uh, was there a lot of uh, leftover music that you're going to be putting out a new album this coming oh, year? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, you know, the pandemic really saved my life in a lot of ways because I had been out there on the road for so long with no break. You know, most blues musicians have to work to maintain. So I was one of those, you know, having to work every weekend to try to keep a roof over my head. But it really felt good to have some days to lay around to think and not have to worry about if this month rent is going to be paid. And that yeah. little boot meant everything to people like me that were in my position, you know, to have some group, regroup time and some time to just rest your body so you feel good to be on the road. People yeah. don't realize how taxing it is sometimes, I think, to be on the road. And a lot of people, you know, take a weekend road trip and say, whoo, I'm so tired, and it takes three, four, five days to get over it. Well, try a dose of about 40 years of it in a row and see how you feel. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it really takes its toll on your body. Yep, yep. And and then then people want your music for free. Go figure. Yeah. It's... Right, right. <laughs> but, yep. uh, well, man, when that when that album comes out, let's make sure you and I talk again and we'll, uh, we'll uh, and maybe the, the Zoom will work the way it should the next <laughs> time around. And, but two smart guys like us, we figured it out and made it happen. And um, they, they couldn't stop us, could they? That's right. We they can't <laughs> can't keep two good men down. So, but um, well, man, enjoy the. I hope you enjoy Albuquerque tonight. Tell my friends in Phoenix hello when you get there, and I, I think it's going to be a dynamite crowd for you there. And uh, before I let you go, I want to ask you one more question, and then I'll uh-huh. ask you this maybe every other time you and I talk. Okay, and okay. I, I ask it of artists who've been around a while, and and um, I don't mean it to be a sad or macabre type of question, but just kind of you know level check on where you're at emotionally, spiritually, and otherwise. And that's when you step off of that tour bus of life up at the great gig in the sky to, to borrow from Pink Floyd. How do you want to be remembered, and what do you hope your legacy is going to be? Well, I, I hope that it will be associated with music. And I hope it'll be, um, I hope that people will think that it was good music. You know, everybody hope to uh, leave something good. But beyond that, I hope to be remembered as a good person, a good musician. But he was a good person, too. And I think that it's very important not only to be a good musician, but to be a good person. And that have been one of the greatest gratifications that this is, uh, the music business have offered offered to me and that was the camaraderie of some great people so you know i learned a long time ago you know the music thing is important it definitely is because it's a job but beyond that you know life and humanity itself takes priority over all so i hope to be remembered as a good person a fun loving person that loves some good music and play good music yeah well i think you've accomplished that while you're alive so there you go that's it and, uh, man, I look forward to catching you on the road sometime in the coming months. When I do, I'll uh, put a note into you. Maybe we can bump elbows backstage or something. And I look forward to the next album. Let's make sure we talk then. And uh, go ahead. No, no, no. Oh, I'll just sure make sure to tell my friend uh, Herman Long that I said hello and that he needs to have another one on Pete Rose out there and let's get a bunch of people together. And do it one time for old time's sake. All right. I'll pass the word along. Definitely will. Well, listen, Please stay safe, it. and I'll talk to you down the road, my friend. My brother, I love you. Take care. All right. T- take care. Get some rest. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.